Welcome. My name is Kylie Minson. I am on the marketing team here at Inflow CX. And today we're going to be discussing um, dynamic prompts with TTS options and doing a live demo for that Genesis admin training. Um, some upcoming webinars we have. Um, this Thursday, we're going to be talking about bringing your own carrier to Genesis Cloud. If that's something that you're interested in, head on over to our website and get signed up. We'd love to have you on that one as well. So jumping on into it. Um, today we're going to um, be going over um, just a brief, a little bit about inflow in cases that, or in case this is your first time joining us. And then I'll hand it over to Richard Dixon, who will be conducting the live demo for the dynamic prompts. After that, we'll have a Q&A session. But if you have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to throw them in the chat or in the Q&A section. We'd be happy to answer them as we go. Um, and lastly, we'll have a little bit of, um, or we'll have a slide on our, um, or on the web methods you can contact us at um, in case you have any uh, follow up questions after today's webinar. So, with that, InfoCX is an innovative provider of strategic advisory, deployment, and managed services for contact center, customer experience, and unified communication solutions. So we help organize or organizations deploy, evaluate, and optimize their customer engagement technology and strategy with our expertise spanning from CCAS, CX, UC, WFO, BPO, automation, analytics, you name it, we probably can help you do it. Um, we provide a vendor or a vendor neutral approach um, with all of our customers to make sure that the technology is what best fits your business. We have award women award-winning implementation services for Genesis NICE CX-1, 59, Ring Central, Zoom. Um, as you can see, we have some really great industry standings and accolades. We're getting up there with our employees. We're just over 85 employees now. Um, we've worked with over 1,000 mid-market to enterprise organizations um, to help enhance their customer experience. Over 500 um, CCAS installs. 300 um, plus contact center engagements and over a thousand unified communications projects. So we know a little bit about what we're doing. <laughs> and as you can see here, this is just a sampling of the partners that we work with. Um, lots of big players in this space and just a lot of areas. Um, and so when it comes to options, we're here to help you narrow down which ones are the best for you. And here's just a sample of our customers. As you can see, we can work with or we work with some of the world's best organizations. Doesn't matter the vertical or the industry, we're here to help. And with that, I'll hand it over to Richard. All right. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going over dynamic prompts with TTS options. Uh, the, the premise of this is going to allow you to have kind of a, a dynamic choice between prompts. So these are things that you've already uploaded as far as uh, uh, wave files that are in the system, or in case of like kind of an emergency situation where you need to switch it out, um, you might not have that available immediately as far as a wave file. So you could also go with a, a TTS option without having to really change a whole lot in your flows. So I'm going to kind of go over the, the first step, which is going to be creating a data table. And these are some of the things that we're going to need in here. So uh, I have an example one that I've already built out, uh, but we'll build it out again here. But this is what it's going to start off. We're going to need a name that goes for any of them. Uh, notes, I put something in there to make it really easy for the person that's coming in. So if TTS is false, the prompt will contain the prompt name for playback. If TTS is true, the prompt field will contain the verbiage to be played back. So that means whatever you type in the field, that's what it's going to play if you have the TTS option there. So for the key reference, that's going to be the name for the data table, for the data table to look up in the flow to be able to, to pick up. Uh, then you're going to have a couple Boolean uh, sections there, which is the custom field. So number two, you're going to have to have an active. So this is easily to enable or disable a prompt to see if it's set to active. So this allows you to go into the data table, have a quick idea. Is this prompt actually active within the system or not? And then number three there is going to indicate whether to use TTS. So this is text to speech. And then four, this is going to be important. It is case sensitive, exact spelling of the prompt that you use. So if you're using a prompt, you must have it exactly the way you have it spelled, including case sensitive within the, the system. Otherwise, it will not pick that up and it will try to you know go with the default path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag over kind of a data table here where we can get started. 
So you could add the optional notes. This is where you put the key references. So we're going to have a field here. So it's going to be add a field. It's going to be a Boolean for the first one to, to match here. So I'm going to jump over to the one that we already have created so you can have a better kind of view of it. Wait a second here to pull this open. So clicking on those three dots, the meatballs, the vertical meatballs there, this allows you to actually go back into the data table and take a look at it uh, to make any edits or add more fields. So this is what it's going to look like when it's complete. So you have the, the prompts with the TTS option at the top. I just named it that way. It's super easy for anybody to, to identify that. Uh, it's going to be active, and the default is going to be false. That way it doesn't automatically go true. That way if you forget and you add something in there, you don't want it to automatically turn on in this case. TTS, again, is going to be default off and then prompt. We just have a field string here with a label. From there, we're going to have to go over and create a flow. Give me a second to get that open. All right, here we are. So this is a brand new flow. This is where we all start when we're making something new. We go down to reusable task, create a reusable task. And don't forget to drag that reusable task all the way back up to the top when we get this built out. All right, so the start, we're gonna have a data table lookup. So we're gonna do data table lookup. We're going to select the data table that we're going to be looking for, which we already have built out in this case, which is prompts to look up a TTS option. We have a couple fields that we need to put in here. So the announcement name, that's going to be the prompt name. So that's going to be the name that you are going to place in there for whatever you are going to want to name this to be able to look up. So we're going to just go prompt underscore name. It's going to be a literal value, I apologize. So the variables, we're gonna have different variables in here. So it's gonna be active or not. So we're going to use a flow. So I'm going to name it flow.prompt active in here. That way it's easy for me to be able to identify is this going to be an active field or not. TTS, we're also going to have to add a variable. Again, that's going to be a flow. And then we're going to give it prompt TTS active for me. Okay, and then the last one, we're just going to call it flow again. So we're just going to call it TTS or name of prompt. You can name it whatever you want. These names are all variables in here. It doesn't have to match mine exactly, but this allows me to be able to easily come in here and identify this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to have it. Do they find this prompt or not? Do they find the data table? If we do find the data table, we're going to need is the message active. So we're going to have to add a few more things here. We're going to have to have a decision. So we're going to go to a logics and to decision. And then we're going to 
add is that prompt expression there. So we're going to go into literal again. There's going to be an expression. I apologize. So we're going to look for prompt active here and apply that. If no, then it will continue down and then go to the normal spot here. So if I look it up and, and this prompt is not active within the system, it's going to continue on and go down to whatever the next action would be below down here. So in this case, we do want it to be active. So then we're going to have to put a few more things in here. So we're going to have a, a play data sequence in here. So this is going to be for the TTS portion of it. Oh, I apologize had to add one more decision in here. Is TTS active or not? So we're going to go back in here, go to logical decision. Pull it up from TTS active. If yes. We're going to play audio. If no, we're going to have an, another section here. So under the audio, we have a little bit more to do in here. So what I do is under the name, what I'm going to change it. So this is going to play the TTS data table value. So it's going to look for that TTS option, which I'm going to minimize again here. Actually, I'm going to bring you over to the, the created data table. That way you can see what this looks like a little bit better. So we have the data table here. So it's going to be checking to see if it's active or not. So if we add a new one in here, the announcement name, so whatever we name it, We want it to be active. That way it's initialized once it checks through. We do want it to be TTS in this case, since we don't have a prompt available. Whatever I type in here, and just have it hello world, save, add another. Cancel back out of this, go back in here. So webinar, true. Right now, when I set this up, it'll actually play hello world if we call into it. If I didn't have hello world in there, it didn't have a value, it's going to take the default. So we'll go back over here, we'll adjust this. So it'll play the default sequence here. So we need to go in here. And in this case, we're going to need to add data. So that's an important part of this. The data part is going to be critical for it. And we're going to be looking for the TTS flow or prompt name. So that's going to take that variable and apply it here, and it's going to play that information. Let me get back here. Speech to text. There we go. So right now, the way we have it set up is it's going to initially look up whether or not we have this data table available. If it finds it, it's going to check to see if that is active. And then after that, it's going to see if it's TTS. If it is TTS, it's going to play the value here that we applied in that data table where it's going to say, hello world. So this next one is going to be a find in this case. So it's going to be a find prompt. And we're going to use an expression for this, which is going to be flow. Let me get this. So it's going to be the flow TTS name of prompt. So that's going to be the initial lookup. So it's going to check that same field that we're checking in 16 over here to play that audio. 
it's going to be looking for that and it's going to look verbatim and check for case sensitivity, whether or not that prompt is within the system. And as a result, we're going to add another prompt or another flow. Load a prompt name. We're just adding that in here. That way we can basically do the same thing that we did over here by adding another data table lookup or another data lookup in this case. So we're going to do the audio again. Go in here. We're going to choose for the data. Load up prompt name. So that's the, the one that we just created up here as a result of that. Remove this one and close. So now with this kind of simple setup, even though it looks a little bit more complex, what this allows me to do is update prompts that I already have within the system and play them, whether I have a TTS value, so a text -to speech value, or the prompt name. That way I can change it on the fly or just by updating a data table as opposed to having to go into each one of my individual flows and make that adjustment. So I can turn on and off flows or turn on and off prompts that I have in here. So if I have like an emergency prompt or just a, a meeting prompt that we, we like to display that way, uh, it's um, more of a temporary basis, something that we would edit more often than not. So something that we would change like a holiday message on quite a few times. This way we could apply it within the data table. That way we don't have to go into the flows and edit it and worry about, did I remember to change that particular prompt within that particular flow? This makes it a little bit easier to be able to track. So if everything fails, or let's say we'll, we'll start at the top. So that data table lookup is not found or fails. It's going to go down to the bottom and continue on with the flow. If it is found and it is active, it's going to make that decision whether or not it's TTS. And I apologize, I placed this in the wrong spot. This actually needs to go here. This is, if it is active, if it is a TTS prompt or not, it needs to go down the TTS line, which will continue on. If it is not TTS, it's going to do that lookup again and find whether or not we have that particularly named um, upload. And if that does play, here it is. If they can't find it for some reason, we can also have that not found where we can add a another text to speech option there or just a default audio file just like any place else within the system you have that availability is there any questions that have come up about this and i'm going to bring this over to another screen so you can kind of see this a little bit better the same type of flow here so that first one's going to be that data table lookup two is going to be that decision is the prompt active or not if it is active, then we're going to be looking to see if it's text to speech. If it is text to speech, it's going to play the, the prompt. If it's not, it's going to look for the prompt and assign a flow result. After that flow result, it's going to play that audio. And then 5B over here is going to be the default prompt if TTS is matching, but the prompt is not found. All right, do we have any questions before we wrap up for today? Looks like we do have one. Jackie, if you could go ahead and raise your question. I know it has a Q&A section there. So what's the use case for that? So um, there's, there's a couple. So this is kind of like what I was talking about where you would often change your prompts um, for something where you would have like a um, like a holiday message. Let's, let's say you, you operate and you have a lot of different holiday messages that you need to get out and change for your flows. This would allow you to easily, by just going into the data table and updating it there, as opposed to having to go into each one of your individual flows. So if you have multiple flows, um, it makes it a little bit easier to edit the data table to bring that data over. Or if you have a stand-up meeting that you have, let's say, um, you know, once a month, and 
it would be hard to go in and add each flow where you need to indicate that, hey, we're our time frame is going to be a little bit different today. Um, this would be another really easy option to apply that. That way you could activate the message or not by going into that data table. Amazing. Oh. Thank you, Richard. And do we have any other questions? All right, I don't think so. And with that, Richard, do you want to go to the other slide? Absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. Well, super great content. Thank you so much for um, showing that to, um, to everyone, Richard. Um, if you guys have any questions after today, um, I know it was a lot of information. You know, get in touch. We're happy to help. Um, there's our phone number and an email. Um, either way, we're more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you again for joining us today. Um, we hope to see you on webinars in the future. Thanks everyone.